Hi, we're here with Kathy Slocum to learn how to make chalk for our 2017 chalk walk. Hello. First, I'm going to start out by going over everything that you'll need for this. Um, you will need plaster of Paris, and there are a couple of different kinds I've been playing with. Um, this is one kind that was available at Hobby Lobby, and this was an, uh, another brand that was available at Ace. I did find out that Lowe's and Home Depot do not carry plaster of Paris, so don't waste your time going there. Um, the next thing that you'll need is either tempera paints or acrylic. You can use either one. What you want to avoid is using any of the washable paints. There's just not enough pigment for um, moisture that's in them and your, your chalk won't set up. So it's acrylic or tempera. I've also been playing with using some powdered temperas. Um, I think you can probably get about nine pieces of chalk roughly out of one of these bags, but beware with either the powdered or the acrylic or the tempera, you are not going to get the really deep, rich um, colors that you're getting out of the chalk pastels. But this is wonderful to put down as an undercoat and use your pastels on top. It will give you some depth to your color, and it will also give you some of your softer tones where you don't want it really deep and rich. Um, you'll need duct tape and scissors, uh, wax paper, scotch tape, a mixing bowl, and if it has a pour spout, um, it makes it a little bit easier. The plaster of Paris, water, and for molds, you're going to use toilet paper tubes. This is the best um, source that I've seen for and cheapest for using for molds, and it works great, and it gives you a shape like this. It's easy to hang on to, and there's a plenty of chalk in one of those. Okay, to start out, you'll need to unroll some, some wax paper, and you want to make sure that you've got a, a fairly clean, straight edge on the, the edge that you're rolling in. This one's a little better. So get a clean, straight edge, roll your paper, and it sort of already starts rolled for you. Sort of. Put it down into your tube. And then you want to cut that off right around the top of the tube. It's not a bad idea then to take some scotch tape and tape the, the loose end that's in there so that it doesn't fold in on you when you're pouring your plaster. Um, if you get a lot of plaster between the wax paper and the tube, that presents a problem. So if you take that, that edge down, that will help. And the next thing you need to do is you need to seal the bottom. And you do that with duct tape. So it takes about two pieces of duct tape stuck down for each roll. And you just set your, your, your tube on that way and your tube on this way. Then gently fold it over. Don't squeeze your tube too tight or you'll get sort of a flat piece of chalk on the bottom. And then the next important thing is these pleats at the corner, you need to make sure those are squeezed shut because this can leak. I, I've been mixing this on the wet side because it's easier to pour and you want to cut down on, on any leaks that you might have. So once you have your tubes with the duct tape secured and the wax paper in them, I found the easiest thing to do was to put a, piece, a rubber band around all three. It keeps them from falling over when you're pouring your, your chalk in. Um, another pointer not to do, I want to point out, you can use um, toilet, uh, paper towel tubes or rubbing paper tubes and cut them down to size, but if you don't cut a nice clean edge, you're going to get leaks out of the bottom. So you, if you can cut off each end of the tube and then use the, the nice straight edge as your bottom. But I ran into trouble with leaks if I cut my tubes and they're not perfect. Okay, here is the recipe that I've been working with um, that seems to work the best. My first inclination was to mix twice that much and make more at once, but it's so easy to mix that there's no need. This recipe will give you three pieces of chalk, roughly this size, and, and um, you can do it two ways. You can mix your plaster, then divide the plaster into different containers and do 
color in each container, or what I've done is just mix it all in one and made three pieces of one color, and then you could move on to the next. This is not rocket science, and there's wiggle room in here. Um, none of this has to be perfect. So my bowl, I found a rubber spatula, makes it easier to get the last of the, the plaster out in a mixing spoon. Um, this is a dollar store bowl because you want to make sure that you're not using a good bowl. So you put your water, this is three quarters of a cup of water in your mixing bowl. And with temperas and acrylics, I've used a, about a quarter of a cup of pigment, of paint. Um, that is about equal to one of these smaller tubes of acrylics if you're going that way. You pour this into your water. There's several different ways to do this. I've seen them put the color in last. Um, I don't think it really matters. I just thought it might be easier to get the pigments sort of dissolved in the water. You have to mix the powdered pigments with the water first, of course, before you add the plaster. And for that, when I used the powder, I used a whisk to whip the, the pigment in. And pour in your cup and a half of plaster. And just, you want to get it stirred until all the little lumps go away. You can mix this stiffer. But then it's, I find it hard to get into the molds. It's easier to mix it wet and pour it. And you're going to lose intensity in your color as soon as you, you mix in the white plaster. The only color so far I have found that really doesn't work and, and to get a, a, a deep um, color or tone out of it is black. I couldn't mix in enough pigment to get a, a really good dark black. Nice grays, but no black. You can see that's lightened up quite a bit from the color of the paint. It darkens a little bit when it dries. And you don't have to rush with this. Um, you've got time to, to mix it and make sure that it's all dissolved. Some people will even wait a few minutes and let it thicken up a little bit before they pour it. Okay. I'm working on a piece of wax paper just to see if it works a little bit. thicker than some that I've mixed. So it can be thinner and still be okay. And what you want to avoid is getting it poured too much between the wax paper and the tube. Another method I saw somebody put it into Ziploc bags and snip the end and squeeze it in. Uh, that doesn't really work all that well. down the, in your sink and down the drain. This is plaster. You don't want that down your drain. So you want to do your cleanup outside, at least your dumping outside. You can fill your bowl up with water and let, and let it soak and then dump it outside. Do not dump it down your drain. So that's about what you're going to get. And you can tamp this down just a little bit, get out in the air pockets, and you're good to go. Um, 
they take a few days before they're usable, so you need to make sure if you're going to make, make some of your own chalk, you give yourself at least a week before. Um, but about after 45 minutes, and I did these a little while ago, after 45 minutes or so, you can unwrap them. It's almost easier to, to do it at this point. Um, the wax paper sticks a little more if you let them dry. Some of the instructions said to let them dry overnight, but um, I found it hard to get the, the paper off then. If a little of the wax paper sticks in it in places, it's not a big deal. That'll just rub off when you use it. And this is a place where it came up between the, the tube and the paper a little bit. Not a big deal. Okay, then if you want to set them on a drying rack, someplace where it gets them up off the, the table, they'll dry a little bit faster. These were mixed yesterday. They're still a little damp. Um, you can unwrap them, set them on a the drying rack, and then give them at least a week before you use them. Just to show, this was the, the dry pigment that I used to make this color. This was about two tablespoons of pigment. So you can see you don't get quite the, the color that you're going to see in the paint, but that gives you an indication of how much lighter that's going to be. Um, if you have any questions, contact me. Every one of you should have my email address and my phone number, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Work. Hey, thank you, Kathy, very much, and we can't wait to see everybody at the 2017 Chalk Walk.